Hey everyone, it's the Drive to School Podcast. I am Pastor Gibbon, your host, and uh, my buddy Pastor Matt Richard is back. How you doing, man? It's good to see you, Harrison. Good to see you too. Uh, we were talking beforehand about what to talk about, and we used a whole bunch of big words, which is awesome. Uh, I think we should teach them, <laughs> but we're going to sort of start with the, the softball question. Uh, what does Jesus say about how to talk to other people? Yeah, I think I think uh, when it comes down to this, as we we're talking about before, it's like what my wife says to, to our kids all the time. It's remember who you belong to, you know, mm. and, and to remember who we are citizens of, right? And so our citizenship, right? Uh, where we belong to, you know, whose name is printed upon us. And and ultimately we would say, well, no, we belong to Jesus. We belong to, we're citizens, citizens of the kingdom of heaven. We belong to light, not darkness, um, that we've been claimed by Christ, uh, snatched from darkness unto light. And so if we understand where we belong and um, where our home is, then that really affects us and how we talk to other people. Um, I don't know about you, but at times where I've, I've found in my life where maybe perhaps I, I forget my citizenship, forget who I belong to, forget my identity, if you will, then I feel like I'm caught up in another group. Then I feel like I have to talk either in a way to uh, maybe appease certain people so I can be included in their group, or I get uh, combative and I you know want to try to set up my own kingdom and mm-hmm. speak in a way that's a opposition to them and try to puff myself up. And, and really, both of those are foolish because guess what? We belong to Jesus. We belong to the kingdom of light. Uh, as my old professor used to say, he said, you know, where do you find Jesus? You find the kingdom. Where do you find the kingdom? You find Jesus. And I think mm-hmm. that's just a great way of thinking about it. And so in a relationship to other people, uh, whether it's at school or the government or whether it's to our neighbor, uh, it's never forgetting who we belong to, where our citizenship is. We used uh, two big words. We'll use two big words. And, and I smiled and nodded because that's what I do when people use big words. Uh, but, but you said uh, we, we don't want to be uh, sectarian and we don't want to be synchronistic. Um, these are sort of healthy ways to understand and talk about this, though. Um, why don't we why don't we kind of define and unpack them? And, and, and you know, not only do we learn a, a new word, but we learn why it's a bad word. Yeah. OK, so so sectarianism and syncretism. Boy, gosh, those are. So, you know, they're fancy words. I think if you can learn these fancy words, we can impress, you know, impress our friends and That's confuse our enemies, for. right? Yeah. Right. Uh, but no, it's, it's essentially what it is, 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 is to be sectarian, uh, S-E-C-T, to be a sect, uh, that basically removes you from everything. And so then you set up your own shop, you pull yourself away from your neighbor um, and, and you hunker down. And so you look at the big bad world that we live in and all of the corruption in the world and we say, not gonna be a part of it. And in, in a sense, we can respect that, that that we recognize that the big bad world is is sinful and that uh, people around us oftentimes don't act the way that they ought to. And and so then we remove ourselves from them and then we set up our own little uh, our own little monastery? sectarian group. Oh, sorry. Yeah, like a, yeah, like a monastery. Right. And, you know, in fact, I hate to say this, we even do this with our churches oftentimes where the church can become a monastery where we we go into the walls of the church and we hide ourselves. Now, we come to the church to receive God's good gifts. But then if you think about the very end of our service, the benediction happens and that we're basically kicked out of the church in his grace to what go serve our neighbor and our vocations. Um, but oftentimes we don't want to do that. We become very sectarian. And that's one way we, we relate to the world, which I would say is not healthy. But then the other side of the coin, the other extreme is, we said it's syncretism. Syncretism, yeah. And to syncretize is to mesh with the world, is to become just like the world. And we can see this a lot of times with individuals where um, you know, don't want to have conflict with the world. We don't want to have conflict with a larger group of people. So we just go with the flow. We, we, we become like them. And then we lose, as Jesus would say, we lose our saltiness, right? Uh, we become just like everyone else and we lose our integrity. We lose the fact who we belong to. And we're just uh, the whole idea of uh, the lemmings, right? We're just a lemming going along with the flow. And that's not healthy either. Uh, that's forgetting our identity, forgetting our kingdom of God, forgetting who we belong to. So I would say both are, you know, we can commend and understand that there's there's some validity to both, right? Not want to be a part of culture. And then also what trying to be able to be with our neighbor and talk with our neighbor and sympathize with our neighbor, but given to the extremes, they're both failing because they forget our identity. They forget Christ. They forget who we are in Jesus. 
Right. And and in doing so, uh, you have to sort of make a new God, because if you don't have Jesus there, you're going to have to start to, to overcorrect somewhere. There's going to be something you have to put value in. You're, you're going to spend all your time running. If you're going to try and be a sect, you're going to spend all of your time afraid of the world corrupting you. And quite frankly, if, if you want to be syncretistic, you're going to spend all of your time running from the idea of being forgotten and being alone. Neither are, are actually love or, or boldness or, or, or any kind of compassion or charity. It's all just fear. But sort of the problem is when, when we deal with the, the idea of being a sect, um, we sort of forget who we are because we're not Jesus. Um, the problem is not that the world is bad. The problem is that the world is full of people whose hearts are bad. And so I can say, you know, the world is a bad place and I don't want to be a part of it. But if I go and I wall myself off, I'm still a sinner and out of my heart still come all sorts of evil thoughts. And so when you go to the monastery, uh, every time we've tried it, it's actually gone really poorly because when you pack a whole bunch of sinners into a box and you say, this box is different than all of the other boxes, it's still full of sinners. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and it goes about as predictably well. But the other side of it is when we just want to sort of mesh ourselves together with culture, because we're afraid of being the minority, we're afraid of being left behind, we're afraid of being forgotten or, or, or alone or any of these things, we sort of forget that... Um, it's not just that, that man's heart is evil. It's, it's that we want to worship. We, we were created to worship. There, there's something inside of us that is desperate to worship. It's just that because of the fall, we worship about anything we can get our hands on, starting with ourselves. And so whenever we get to, to syncretism, this is a, a church word when we, when we use it. It's about how we, we worship. Uh, we, we can't bring in the, the things the world worships into our church and say this is a part of God. Uh, you can live in the world as somebody who worships God. If you remember who Jesus is, the world is not a scary place. But over and over again, Israel would go out into the to the world and they'd be like, these guys are awesome. Their gods aren't so bad. What if we just did both? Um, and we see Christians today sort of wrestling with the same. Can I, can I be a Christian and then adopt a world's view on sexuality? Can I be a Christian and, and, uh, adopt a, a business mindset on, on, on greed and, and capitalism? And you take things that, that, um, are actually meant to exist in this world, like sexuality, like capitalism uh th that that are, are actually sort of a part of the way that daily bread works down here but then when we we start to worship them we do really bad things with them and it, it gets even uglier when we as christians want to say that this is a part of this is a part of our religion now yeah so i i think we were actually studying with a group of pastors this morning we we're studying and in, in peter and he's talking about subject yourself to authorities and 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 one of the observations that we made was the word subject uh, it's to place and to put one under, but I, 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 I pulled on, I said, you know, it's interesting that, that in the gospels, we always see these people coming and they fall on their knees and they worship Jesus. Now, in a sense, that idea of worship in the new Testament, in, in the gospels is also to place one underneath Jesus, but there's a sense of worship, which is to have a reverence for Christ. And it's a holy awe and a holy fear of God. Uh, him is almighty. And I would say that there's a difference between worship underneath, yielding underneath worship of Christ, and then subjecting to a government. And so mm. we respect the government, no doubt about it. We should respect those in authority. Um, but I would say our, our worship is reserved for what? For one mm. only, for Christ. And so oftentimes what can happen is those in, in, in positions of authority, they demand our worship. And I would say, no way, no how, we don't do that. But we can still what uh, show respect for that office and yield to that office, and so in all things, it, it's reserving and understanding uh, that that there's only one who bleeds and dies. Um, I, I love this thought about mm -hmm. you know all these fake idols that we have, and and you know the idols that uh, we look at, as you mentioned before, from Israel, all these idols that they 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 were in, in, in encountering, and all the idols that we have today that we encounter. The question is, does this idol bleed for me? And it doesn't. I mean, most of the idols that we create, they take from us. And so we have worship for Jesus because he bleeds, he gives to us. And that is the that is the only place for worship is before Christ Almighty, the one who gives and bleeds for us. And so again, we can show subjection to others people um we can we can walk honorably with people in the pagan world um and and to show re respect and honor uh, to walk with honor and show respect and and love and grace to them but ultimately um we don't worship them we don't worship those mindsets we worship one only who gives us all good things and shows us our identity which is christ almighty and his kingdom uh that comes to us and so again it's 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 as simple as what my wife says all the time to my kids you know remember who you belong to it's, it's yeah. simple but it's profound you know just to remember who you belong to 
So sort of holding on to that in practice, then um, you're not going to go too far out into this world until you find somewhere that people disagree with you about mm -hmm. about who you belong to. How do you how do you talk to them without well, like we, we've talked about what not to do, but but what do we do? Well, and I think I think that again that comes about what we talked about before. It's it's, it's remembering our identity, and so then there's not a defensiveness. Uh, there's an assurance. There's a posture of uh, spiritual composer com composure. We talked about this here uh, last week, and in, in, in my sermon here at uh, St. Paul's, we talked about this about the word idea of meek to be meek. Now, when we think meek, we think mousy, we think timid, um, but the the historical word for meek that Jesus uses, uh, that, that was used of Jesus when he came into uh, Jerusalem, is that the meek is to have spiritual composure, to be uh, calm and cool and collected, uh, to have assurance. And so for Christians, uh, we act with assurance because guess what? We've been given all good things of forgiveness, life, and salvation. And so if we have forgiveness, life, and salvation in Christ, and we have all good things and we have eternity to look for, then what can mere man do to us? Uh, uh, really, I mean, what can mere man? So then when we encounter uh, maybe a neighbor who's obloviating and a neighbor who is is talking the big talk or trying to push us around, we can simply smile and be gracious to them knowing what? They're not our God and, and they don't control our eternity. Um, and so we can have sympathy for them. We can uh, show grace to them. We can walk with integrity with them because we, again, we know who we belong to. We know all good things come from Christ. We know our true citizenship, uh, which is in heaven. And so then as we walk in our citizenship in this world uh, as, as U.S. citizens or Canadian citizens or, or so forth, uh, we can walk with integrity. We can walk with graciousness. We can walk, uh, you know, visiting with those, our neighbors who are, are maybe different from us but ultimately not succumbing to them or worshiping the ideologies of the false gods of the day and age, because ultimately they don't believe and die for us. I love it. Pastor Richard, thanks so much. Hey, it's good to see you, Harrison. You too. Take care, man.